That's right, everybody. It's that time of the week again, bitch. That's right. It's another episode of Old School, New School Comedy Podcast. And I am your trash talking host, Christy Miller. I almost forgot my name for a second there. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. I just got home from the road at four o'clock in the morning. Um, with me this week, you guys, is a very special fr- friend of mine. She's a dear friend. And I'm going to just say, She's one of the true advocates for females in comedy, you know, and, and we're going to talk about all this because I'm going to explain why I say that about this woman. She's beautiful. She's funny. She's smart. She's supportive. She's also the CEO of hard headed comedy and she produces shows all over like the Westchester area, you know, all that area and oh, anyone that'll stuff. have her basically. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love her. Give it up for Luz Michelle, darlings. Ooh, thank you. Thank you so much, Chrissy. Thank you. No, thanks for coming on, girl. Of course. Of you, know, course. you know, I love you to death. Same and, here. You know, you're just, and when I say a true advocate for females in the comedy world, because women are not nice to other women in this industry. Men, and I always try to explain this to people, and I always say, you know, men are nicer to women Mm. than women are to women because (laughs) men have penises and women have vaginas. And a man always thinks is that one little shot to get that penis inside that vagina, so he's gonna treat her a little better than the other women. And the other women in comics, especially the insecure ones, they have to be the pretty one. They have to be the funniest one in the room. They have to be the only girl in the lineup because they can't handle other females because they want to be the chick and that's cool. And it's like, you know, I don't give a fuck if you have a vagina, a penis, <laughs> both. I don't care what your pronoun is. If you're a dolphin, if you identify as a litter box, I don't fucking care. Just be funny. Be funny. That's all I ask. Mm-hmm. Be and funny. you know, I see you on the socials and mm-hmm. stuff and how you run your business and how you run shows and you really, really support females like you share all of our content and when you share like me i'm speaking personal you guys i'm speaking totally <laughs> on the personal all about me you know obsessed for Chrissy. Obsession. <laughs> <laughs> no but i see it from the heart like when you share like my clips or mm. where i'm going or what i'm doing it just it, it makes me feel so good and it's oh, so kind and it that. really means a lot to me and i just want you to know that because you do it for everybody you I know, do. you're just you're just that girl's girl. Like, if you want to look up girl's girl in the dictionary, <laughs> it's Louis Michelle. <laughs> I appreciate that because I do. I do my best to support women. Yeah. You know, I do my best to produce shows where it's four women on the lineup and one man, right? And yeah. not just you're making a quota. Yeah. Right. You're making the room feel comfortable. Don't worry. There's a woman. No, yeah. this is, we have four women. Yeah. And the host is a woman. Yeah. And, <laughs> but you don't just book us just because we're women. No. You also not book at all. like, this bitch is funny. Mm-hmm. This dude is hilarious. Like, you're like, nobody cares. Be funny. And that's what we need to get to because all these years, like, I did a show on uh, West Hartford last night. It was mm. phenomenal. And the host and the guy that promoted it and booked the room was, he was a dude and he had all women, but there was one guy that did a guest spot. And, um, I love men. Yeah, I do too. But <laughs> ones that are funny. Okay. Don't be not funny. On I'm the lineup respectful. If you have a penis, do not do that. Don't, or a vagina or a dolphin mm. down there. I don't give a fuck. Just be funny, you know? But it was like, the room was phenomenal. He packed mm. it out. The crowds were phenomenal, but it was just like, you know, there are all chicks on the lineup and he did it on purpose. And I'm like, stop checkboxing. Mm. Are these bitches funny? Then mm. put them on mm-hmm. the lineup just because they're funny. He goes, well, they fit the description of the show. It was, a, it was their NC-17 series. So okay. it was, it was get, as, a, as a, you know, R-rated or NC-17 show, like it's going to be crazy. And it, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. The crowd was wild and fun. That's great. I love when the crowd is ready and they came out for yeah. comedy. And the brilliant right? thing about that, his name's Mo Green. He books the Elbow Room in mm. West Hartford. He's a great dude. He's a homie. I, I met him years ago at Yonkers Comedy Club when I did a show there. And he's phenomenal. And I just love him to pieces. And and super funny. But he, he goes, yeah, I do these like once a month NC-17 series. And it kind of puts that, that, that precedent out there that shit's gonna get crazy. Mm-hmm. So it, it kind of helps. Like when I do shows, I always tell them, put a not safe you know, NSFW on there yeah. or put an NC-17, put a disclaimer on there. Because to me, it sets that mindset 100%. for the audience, that subconscious thing that, okay, we're gonna see some crazy dark shit. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you, you are. Know, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah. and also when you're in a comedy club versus like a like a, an event space or if you do bar shows or if you do whatever the fuck rooms you know if you set a precedence people it's a subconscious thing 
when they walk into an actual comedy club, because we broadcast here from Comic Strip Live in New York City, one of my favorite clubs. And it's, when you come here, you're in that comedy club mindset. You know there's gonna be comics telling jokes. Mm -hmm. But if it's at another venue, it kind of makes it harder, because it's like a, it's a, do you understand, do you see I what do. I'm saying? 100%. That subconscious thing it's that people, yes. when you walk into a place, a subconscious thing connects in your head, and you automatically have an assumption or a stance or a posture, or uh, or, sure. or feel some type of way about it, positive or negative. You know, it does. How do you? I know because you do things in like jazz clubs. Mm. I did a show for you at a jazz mm. club up in. Uh, she was phenomenal. Uh, uh, what was it? White Plains. Yeah. No, we were in. What uh, was that? I forgot. Point Pleasant. No, Point Pleasant. I'm thrown in Jersey. Mount Kisco. Mount Kisco. We're that's in Mount right. Kisco. We were in Mount Kisco. It's this gorgeous jazz club. And Lou's put on a hell of a show that night. It was night. a great show, sold out show. Yeah, and sold out. They loved it, you know, because there's nothing up there. Mm -hmm. And so when yeah, you play, yeah, that's so, what's the point exactly. Yeah. We need more entertainment yeah. up in Westchester. So do you find doing <laughs> stuff in Westchester County and all that and around that area, like jazz clubs or music venues or whatever? Do you find it's harder to get people in, even though it's a it's a desert, Good a question. comedy desert? Good question. It all depends. That's okay. what I'm learning. It all depends on if there's a holiday coming up. It True. depends on the season. Yep. And what type of show is it? Yeah. Like where I am, the biggest ticket sales are moms. The biggest ticket sales are moms who want to go out with their friends in groups of like six to 15 of them. I love that. <laughs> moms day out. Moms yeah. day every day. <laughs> Kids are in the trunk. <laughs> Next to the box wine. <laughs> Sometimes we have to. <laughs> hey, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do, you know? But I do believe that there is more of a demand for stand-up in Westchester because I go to places that either just have music mm -hmm. or they'll have an author coming in to sign a book. And I'm like, what about stand-up comedy? Yeah. You know, like people want to laugh, especially now. It's so important. It's so, so important. Because we forget. I know I do. I can be so serious and I forget. And then I'll see you. I'll be here. And I'm like, oh, right. Right. There's fun in what we do. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have funny without fun. Yeah, so. true. Very or true. F you. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> it all goes together. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Gotta have a rim shot in I there. I love that. Hey, did somebody say rim job? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Sorry, kid. Her daughter's here. It's How okay. She she's heard old? it all. She's nine. She's nine? Oh, she's heard everything. Yes. Nine going on 19, so yes. we're good. <laughs> Had a girl. Give your mother a heart attack anytime you can. Oh, we did this morning. <laughs> Thank you. Great. <laughs> I said it's too late for an abortion. Oh, it's so too late. It's so too late. No, I do. I love her. I'm no, going to keep her. You're going to keep her? For now. Keep her. Yeah. For now. Yeah. Catch me in two months. Right. <laughs> so when did you start doing stand-up? Ooh, child. 13 years next month. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, we always 13. have the same birthday. Oh, what'd you I'm December 1995, so I'll be 28 next month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grandma over here. <laughs> fucking the feet is sitting over here. You're so phenomenal. You, oh, true, you are. It. You're a true fucking rock star. You really you. are. When you said yes, when I asked you for that show that day, I was so damn happy. Because I did. I was like, I want to see her like live in action. I remember when I first met you. She's not going to remember. <laughs> we were. Because I have fucking Alzheimer's. <laughs> that's why. Because I'm 90. <laughs> We were by the Grizzly Pear, uh -huh. the older one, yeah. by um, what's it called? By Cellar. Yes, and you were standing outside, and I was walking with Oscar. I was going with Oscar Eden. Right. And all of a sudden, I'm, he's like, "Hey!" And I'm like, oh, "Is he? Is he going to say hello to Chrissy?" <laughs> and then he did, Aww. and I was like, "Oh, Luz Michelle, you don't know me. I love you. I'm a big fan. I love your badass energy." You just. Yeah, because you too. You know, I actually do remember that night. I hope you do. I do. Because anything with Oscar in it, I remember. And it's <laughs> scarred in my brain like a bad acid flashback. And I feel like I'm in Vietnam when I see her. Yes. <laughs> Oscar's already done the show, so they know her. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So damn good. But I feel like you do too. You open a lot of doors for women. You know what? You I do. just, I, I'm a comedy fanatic. And the, my followers know, and people that listen to this show, because... That's why I do this show because I love talking shop. Mm. I, at 28 years in, I love it more now than when I started, and I thought that would be impossible. 100%. But like, you know, you get like last night there was a lot of new jacks or some mm. there were some uh, mass up, you know, Western mass comics there that were on the lineup. Like it was only four of us, you know, including the host. But mm. uh, 
you know, it was, there was a girl from Western Mass, from Worcester. She's from Worcester. <laughs> and she had glitter lipstick on. She's from oh, Worcester. I love glitter lipstick. Wicked smart from Worcester. No, she was great. She was phenomenal. <laughs> I loved her. You know, but you could, I can see, I'm like, oh, she's probably about seven, eight years in. Because I'm, I'm like a fucking Coney Island circus act. I can watch I you. I love Coney Island. Right, who doesn't? <laughs> People that live in Coney Island. Anyway. Yeah. My husband was born and raised, so yeah. Yeah, that's why he's in Westchester. That's why we're in Westchester. Okay. <laughs> but uh, like, uh, it was, but I just love funny people. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. Make me laugh. And it's I'm, true. and usually comics, like uh, Wally Collins was on the show a couple weeks ago. Oh, we love Wally, I love him. He's so delicious. And fucking hilarious. But we were talking about how comics laugh at other comics, mm. that they don't laugh. They watch and they go, oh, fuck, that's hilarious. Dude, that's, oh my God, that's a good joke. Good joke. Like we, we commentate, like we're commentators mm. off to the side. But I actually will say that, but I will laugh because I like to put, I love listening to the rhythm. Like I listen mm. to it like a composer, mm -hmm. like how the rhythm goes with the verse and the song and the bridge and the chorus. I listen to the rhythm and how it's set up. And I get into that, how people break down joke writing mm -hmm. and how they deliver that joke. I love people's patterns and their rhythm and how they hear it. I, I love that. Like yeah. I'm into the, all that shit. Because it is and a science. I it, feel like there's yeah, a science it's, behind it. It's, yeah, it, it's a science, but it's also, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a... There, there's a formula to it. There's a yes. basic comedy formula, but there's also your point of view. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's very organic. And, you know, it's uh, the more you up there, the more it flows and sounds natural. People ask me how you sound like you're just talking and making shit up. And I'm like, dude, I have hours written, yeah. but I don't write word for word, mm -hmm. you know? So you're 13 years in, how do you, like, what is your writing style? Like, how do you, mm -hmm. how, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I feel like it took me a good decade to have a positive relationship with getting my material together. You know what? Honestly, can I just tell you, you're right on time. Mm. Because like I've had people come to me for coaching or break mm. it down and having, Christy, I'm having this, I, I'm, nothing's working, I'm, nothing's this. I'm, I, all of a sudden, nothing, everything just stopped working and I'm, I don't know what's going on. I feel disconnected. I go, what are you like, five, six years in? They're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baby's first growing True. things. Because I go, so this is how I break it down, and this will make you, this will put it all in perspective for you. I break comedy down, like our cop, because we basically give birth to a persona mm -hmm. or a character, right? So when you give birth, so your first year, that, that kid's only a year old. What do kids say at a year old? Da ga goo ga ga na na ass, you know, or something, you know. It's like one word, they're barely standing up, they're holding onto the table, it's a lot of gibberish, silly things make them laugh. And then they turn five. Mm. Kids get a, start getting a conscience around oh, five. Yeah. You know, they start, they're more aware of their mm. surroundings. They, they kind of have an idea that they're, oh, they're a person now. They're a functioning person. They're kind of independent. They can get their own toys. So now you're a five-year-old kid. That zero to one to two and three-year-old is baby talk. I'm a big girl now. I don't have to talk like that anymore. It's all true. Yeah, so <laughs> all that gibberish doesn't make sense to you. Mm. So either you've got to revamp it to your five-year-old self or you got to scratch it and keep writing and you got to get it then it lasts from five to six or five to seven depending on how much you're writing or how much you're getting on stage it's an average everybody's different and then once you cross that line you kind of okay okay that works now that doesn't work so i got rid of it and i changed this a little bit i updated it whatever then at 10 years old you're like holy shit! Mm -hmm. i think i know who i am on stage what do 10 year olds, they have a conscience, they're independent, they ride their bikes too, they can walk themselves to school and back. They're latchkey kids when we, Gen X, oh, hello. latchkey. Right, remember latchkey, it was so fun. It was. Mom wasn't home. That's the thing, I didn't want to go home yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could let myself in later, you know. I got the key, I got it. Yeah, I got don't worry it, I got about it. it. I got it, you know. But then you're 10 years old, so you're at that point like, okay, now I know what my direction is, what my view is, what my, focal point is and how I want to direct and what the things I want to say are. So that zero to 10 kind of gets either scratched or you revamp it and rewrite it and update it and change it to a 10 year old's perspective. Then from 10 to 20 is when the writing really starts. 
From 10 to 20 is when you really start writing for that voice you spent 10 years developing. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you're, you're like I said, you're right on time. Thank you. Because I did, I got like, I guess a, you'll say like a little nervous, like in the first 10 years where I was like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Why am is my note taking? Like, like I was hugely addicted to sticky notes. Sure. All over. Yeah. And the, But it wasn't helping, but it was helping. Right. And then what I learned is probably this year, I was like, oh, I had to figure out who I was mm -hmm. in order to actually take notes in yeah. a way that's going to get me to what's next. Exactly. Yeah. And the sticky notes were great because they were thoughts, they exactly. were feelings, they were expressions. So you're putting them all over the place. And then all of a sudden you look at them as a whole, like mm -hmm. it's a map mm -hmm. of the United States. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm all 50 states. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at one time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I love those little sounds. I know, too. they're so fun. <laughs> That's so stupid. Um, I love it. But no, you're right on time. So um, being 13 years in, mm -hmm. then you got into producing shows and getting that together. So with you and your writing style, and you kind of figured it out, now what does work for you now after all of that and having mm -hmm. all this experience under your belt? What works for me now is true confidence. And Got I can it, say that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. That was always my biggest struggle. It wasn't the confidence about getting on stage. I can get on stage, but it was the confidence within myself to be myself, right? You always hear that, go. just go on stage and be yourself. Yeah, that took me like 11 years. Yeah, it does. You know, like it really Young took comics, a journey. Young comics, listening, listen to what yeah. she's saying because this is so dead on dead ass on so yeah it was i had to really learn like who i was so now it's like even friday night i had a phenomenal show with mm -hmm. alice chan we had a sold out show on the upper west side 